Springtime in Indiana, where the cherry blossoms beckon in another season of renewal on the Indiana University campus. But today on this hollowed ground, competition is in the air as 33 teams fight for every inch and every lap. Duke's trying to come around the outside. And we're going to go neck and neck Delta for the Gamma. winner of the Little Five. Dukes and Delta Gamma win the Little Five. Last year, the women of Delta Gamma captured their first title and did so in epic fashion. Will KC Dukes and company pull off another victory? Or will the winningest team in women's Little 500 history, Kappa Kappa Gamma, top the podium for the sixth time? This is the world's greatest college weekend. This is the world's greatest college weekend. Live from Bloomington, Indiana, this is the 26th running of the Women's Little 500 on Access TV. Anticipation building inside Armstrong Stadium for the 26th running of the Women's Little 500 race. Riders at the ready beginning to warm and blankets, gloves and leggings will be in vogue this year. It is unseasonably cold today in Indiana. The Little 500, the women's race today, the men's race tomorrow, all right here on Access TV. Rich Cellini joined by two proud IU alums, Jason Sonnenborn, Hans Arneson. Jason raced for Delta Chi, two top five finishes, and Hans and ATO won the little five back in 2006. The focus of this world's greatest college weekend comes around these two big days of racing. But Jason, this is bigger than just two days. Oh, it really is. The little 500 is about many things, but especially three things. One, building student leaders, and we, we do that exceptionally well with this bike race and, and, and the work that ISF does towards the event. Second, uh, philanthropy. Uh, all the proceeds from this race go to scholarships for working students. Today we've raised over 1.5 million in scholarships for working students and we're very proud of that. And third, a connection with Indiana University. Uh, it forms a lifelong bond. When you participate in this event, you come back and you're a part of it. So we're all connected as, well, as alumni. Yeah, how big is the weekend? The town doubles in size. Hans, what does this mean for you as a racer today? It's a really special day, Rich, it is. It's great to be back, and these riders take this race very seriously. Every race that they do throughout the year, whether it's collegiately or in the summer, is seen as practice for today. They're very fired up. They've given up their spring breaks, their winter breaks. They've sacrificed that time to go and train in warmer weather. But they're ready. They're well-prepared, well-trained, and ready to race. Oh, anticipation for this year's race may be at an all-time high. Before we dive head first to 2013, let's take a look back at 2012. Gentlemen, we have had one of the great races of all time under the lights. This was the 25th year for the women. It was truly an exceptional race. Balanced field, and in fact, in 100 laps, more action is packed in today in the women's race than many years in the men's race. What a competitive field that we have. We have many of the favorites back this year. Well, they did not run the Hans Arnson Special, which is where you lap the field. We came down to the final sprint. That's right. It was a great sprint last year. It was won by inches. But you know, uh, DG, they're back, they're veteran. Uh, they're gonna have a great race again this year. They know what to do, they know how to win. Yeah, they do, and they understand that they are the champ until somebody knocks you off. And you know what, we spent a day with the DJs as they got ready for this big day in the Little Five. Over the 25 year long history of the Women's Little 500, races coming down to the wire have been status quo. And last year was no different. With a quarter of a lap remaining, Casey Dukes turned it on to ride the ladies of Delta Gamma right into the history books. Here we go. One lap to go to capture the 25th running of the women's little five. Dukes trying to come around the outside. And we're going to go neck and neck Delta for the Gamma. winner of the little five. Dukes and Delta Gamma win the little five. I don't really know what I was thinking at the last minute. We had, our coach had talked to me about it a little bit as to like what I should do, and yeah, I just felt like it was the time to go around her in turn three. It was the best feeling you could ever ask for, and absolutely the highlight of my college career. I mean, it's something that I've been working for since I was a freshman. Casey's been working for since yeah. she joined the team, and it was really just an incredible experience. It was actually a little sentimental having Casey beat Theta and having all of Theta's alumni here that had actually started the women's race. So that was, um, 
I don't know if that rubbed a little salt in their wounds or not, but <laughs> it was actually pretty cool. It was great to have that tradition and um, I think just a little bit more meaningful since it was such a mile marker in this race. Yeah, I think if you're going to win for us, like our first championship, I think that winning the women's 25th is definitely like the cream of the crop it's when the it comes down. Go. Yeah, so <laughs> it was really special. It was great. Well, Jason, we understand who the champs are, but there are other teams to watch in this field. Oh, and you've got a lot of notables in the field. Cap Alpha Beta, they're celebrating the 10th anniversary of their last win in 2004. Four wins under their belt. ITT winners and Chilminiac back on their team. They look for a great performance out of Cap Alpha Theta. We also really like Teeter, a uh, winner of Team Pursuit, strong, balanced team, wins in 2010 and 2011. They're going to be tough to beat. The team in the green jerseys with the pole position, Kappa Kappa Gamma, they're going to be reckoned with as well. They are. I mean, they're, they're kind of my dark horse this year. They're well-rounded. They're well-coached. I think they're going to have a great race, and if they can stay in there to the end, who knows, they may surprise some of the other top teams. You know what, and they're also a lot of fun. We got to spend a day with them as well. As the winningest team in women's little 500 history with five victories, Kappa Kappa Gamma is poised for their sixth. This year, they enter the race in pole position, and as they prepare for race day wearing their green shirts, they know the rest of the field will be hot on their heels. All of our exchanges just came together right before calls in like the most amazing way and that has a huge thing to do with getting the pole for us like we like to work hard at our exchanges um, races are won and lost with those I think. I think it really it's just the beginning of our season it just starts us off on a good note I mean I think everyone knows that we're a team that normally ranks well. It makes us more hungry too because we know now we have something like you know, we've set our, a bar for ourselves and we want to live up to that and really just prove that we hopefully deserve that and work hard to get there. Yesterday we were going psycho in the car, I don't even know why. I think it was because we had such a hard workout. We had, um, what was it, endorphins. We had so many endorphins, so we were just like, ah! It just like really fuels our flame because we want to live up to the expectations that have been placed in Kappa. And I think it's just a confidence booster knowing that we've had such a great program for so long with great coaches that we're lucky. I think anyone's game plan is to break away when you have depth in your team, and I think that's what we have. So we have sprinters, we have riders that can go out there and do long distances, and I think we have a lot of heart. So I think we really want it this year. Yeah. So I think that definitely is going to play in our favor. I mean, most teams say that they want it, but we really want it. We really want it. <laughs> So much of this is based on tradition. You know, those young women would like to add their own chapter of greatness. Oh, absolutely. Kappa Kappa Gamma with the most wins in Little 500 history with five. And they're starting where, where they're most accustomed to. These girls always qual well. They're starting in the number one slot. They'll be wearing the green jersey. And uh, look for a great race for them, for them today. All right, time now to introduce the fourth member of our broadcast team down to the infield. And here's Jill Savage. Thanks so much, Rich. We are going to have bad weather conditions today, to say the least. It's very windy down here on the track. It's 41 degrees right now, but it feels more like 32. I was able to talk with some of the riders before, and they said they're so excited. They don't care about the windy conditions, and they're just happy it's not raining like it was last year. Now, the good news for all the ladies that will be racing today is that the track is wet and compact, and that might make for the best conditions the women have ever seen, Rich. It is going to be a fast track, and we're going to work our way toward the green flag here and get this day of racing started. The 26th running of the Women's Little 500 on Access TV will be back in a moment. Welcome back inside Armstrong Stadium as we get ready for the 2013 Little 500, the women's race today and the men's race tomorrow right here on Access TV. Riders being introduced for the walk around the track and some of those nerves and emotions beginning to build in everybody right now. Yeah, and they, they just need to be patient at this point. There's so much pageantry with the Little 500. Right now, they are amped up, they're excited. All the women from their houses and dormitories are out to support them. But the race isn't going to start for another 10 to 20 minutes. So they just kind of need to take their time and loosen up. Yeah, Hans, you said one of the more difficult parts is sitting there trying to stay calm as we get ready to go. That's right, you try to stay calm, you try to stay warm. 
we try to stay focused and you'll see some of the riders who may be starting this race they're going to not walk around the whole lap with the team uh, they're going to hop on the trainer and try to keep those legs warm well hans and jason both participated four times in this little 500 hans was the champion in 2006 for alpha tau omega time for a little flashback to greatness into lap 24, a little over 15 minutes old is the 56th men's little 500 here on the campus of Indiana University. Oh, this is great. It looks like Hans is trying to get away right now. Putting the pedal down hard. This is a 200 lap race. I've never seen a performance like this in the track. This is unreal. Hans has lapped the entire field by himself. Kissing the crowd, Hans knows how to play it up. One lap to go to win his first ever Little 500. Down the stretch, the Borg Wagner Trophy awaits. The 56 Little 500 goes to Alpha Tau Omega. What jumps out most when you look back at those highlights, Hans? Um, I've got chills just watching that, just thinking back on that day. I mean, it was a great day, great race. Uh, amazing, amazing to be back here. I love it. Jason, you were there. You were upstairs calling that race. Yeah, after uh, <laughs> I've called 12, and I've, I've seen a number of these at this point, and, uh, and I really believe that, that that was an exceptional performance and unlike anything I've ever else I've ever seen here at the Bill Armstrong Stadium. You know, the fun part of coming back year after year and watching these races is we see things that we haven't seen before, uh, sometimes very much on a positive side, sometimes things might make you wince a little bit, but we expect a wonderful women's race today. We really do, and that's what's so exciting. The women have taken this event so far in 26 years that you have five or six teams that are all legitimate contenders today. They are so well trained and, and have created such an exciting race that I truly believe it competes with the excitement level of the men's race, second to none. Well, some of the things that get you excited are the great performances. Some of the things that make you sometimes cringe a little bit are the crashes, and we've never gone through a race, either on the women's or the men's side, without a few pile-ups. And you know what, here's a look at some of the things that make the Little 500 so exciting. Oh, oh and there was a crash at the back of the field. Sometimes riders just overlap. Oh, oh, and the cutter rider, we just had a crash. And a pile-up. Huge crash. That's Phi Delta Theta, Sigma Chi, cutters are down. And we've got our first crash in the back of the pack. Absolute carnage. We had a guy on his top tube here. Team number 30. Oh, and a spill by Kappa oh. Kappa Gamma. They're not having quite the day they had hoped for there. Oh, look at that just get away. And yeah. Some of the bumping Ooh. and a, another little mishap. Oh, you just see. shot all the way in the inside. And what oh. really hurts about that is that you just hit your shoulder and your collarbone right on that cement gutter. Oh, that was not a good exchange. And we already have a crash. Yeah, this is really just chain reaction crashes, you know. That one, you really can't see what happened. Looked like somebody got stuck on the gutter there and just went all crash, the outside or still down. And we've got another pile up on the back side. Our first crash. And it's a huge one. Huge, pile huge up. one in turn one. Oh, we just had another big crash. Yep, and they're still piling up. Uh, gentlemen, you ever been part of those pile ups, Hans? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Uh, in 2005, had a big pile up in turn one on lap one of the turn race. Turn one, lap one. Yeah, not the best place to have a crash uh, when you have 20 some teams coming over behind you. But yeah, unfortunately, yes, I've been involved. I have the, the cinder scars to prove it. It's not a fun place to be. Now, Jason, you talk about anybody who's raced on this quarter mile cinder track. You take a little bit of it with you. It's, it's a badge of honor in a way. And Hans knows it as well as I do. It's painful as they're being scrubbed out by the medical staff and when you get in the shower for the first time. But you wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Uh, a chance to compete and a chance to race in this truly unique race on the cinder track. How many people are out there racing on cinder tracks today? Not very many places. It's 60, this is our 63rd year and, uh, and we're still excited about the quarter mile track here at Bill Armstrong Stadium and the history and the tradition that we have along with it. Well, you talk about that and you know, what was this race designed for at the beginning to get students involved? It's grown into so much more that not only students and alum and people, this is something to keep an eye on, to follow and to get excited about every spring. 
That's exactly right. I mean, Ho Howdy Wilcox in 1950 saw students whipping around campus on their bicycles, and he thought, fantastic. What a great way to get students involved, get students participating. And, and in this day and age, we need that more than ever. So 63 years later, you've got leaders building teams of, teams of four, alumni coming back every year to support their teams, and it really is something special. And you talk about real team effort and teamwork. It's not just a one-person race in this. You have to have a certain number of exchanges, and that's also part of the strategy in this race. That's right. With the women's race today, you have to do at least five exchanges. And I think we're going to see that today. Here you've got an exchange taking place on the track. Uh, this is a bike, uh, same rider, regular exchange. Riders looking for the bike, taking the hand off, try to grab it in the middle of the bike, and then the other dismounting rider uh, will get out of the way. And you, you can see really what she's looking for there. She's got a 90 degree kind of slant with her right arm, wants to give a nice good landing spot so the rider can come into that nice target. She picks up speed. She picked it up pretty smoothly there, Hans. That's right. I mean, the, the biggest thing there for the rider taking the bike, I think, is to run with it a little bit, get up to full speed, and hop back on that bike. Um, I do a, a demonstration with riders when I was coaching. We'd, we'd show one person who's starting on a bike from a standstill and another one who's running and sprinting and jumping on and showing them how you get up to speed a lot faster that way. And the bike, also a part of the star of this weekend. You, Jason, you've talked about tradition, you've talked about things staying the same. When they say mount your Schwinn bicycles, it means something. Well, in, in the 70s, we had a former Olympic rider, Wayne Stetton, in the race, and he found this bike and he called it the Great Equalizer. He said, there's only so fast I could go on this bike. It's because it, it's really, there's only one gear. It's a 46 by 18. Um, the coaster brake is obviously unique, which we saw in the, in the uh, exchange earlier. 700 by 32 wheels. They pump them up to, what we hear, Hans, around 70 to 80 PSI. Um, and everybody's riding riding the same tires, the stock tires. There are a couple things that you can change. Um, and one of those being the pedals. The other, they custom build their own wheels. Um, so you'll see some really nice wheel sets out there today. But not a lot has changed with the bike since the race started in 1951. Why do they call it the Great Equalizer? Well, you've only got one gear. And the only way that you can make that bike go faster is by pedaling it faster. And it, today, that might be a factor. There's a strong headwind on the back stretch. And I think those teams who have trained and, and lifted weights are going to show and be able to separate themselves sometimes if they want to. If they want to do the extra work and go out there by themselves, they'll be able to separate themselves from the pack. Well, you have those teams that you know are the favorites that we've touched on, the teams to watch. Uh, there are also, and we've seen this before, there are some teams that come out of the pack that maybe people haven't quite noticed quite so much who can make an impact on the race. That's absolutely, and we've seen that in years past. In 2009, we saw Pi Phi sneak up for a victory. And Delta Gamma last year, you know, a, a strong team, but, but essentially surprised a uh, a teeter team that had, that had won team pursuit and done a whole lot of great things in the spring. So, so it's not always the favorites, especially with the women this year. I think it's just as balanced as ever. And I just I tell you what gets you excited if you follow this is the names that are coming back to compete once again. Uh, some people to defend a title, other people for a little bit of redemption. And now let's go down for our invocation, which will be done by Brother Patrick Hyde from the St. Paul's Catholic Center. Attention in the pit area, starting riders, report to the start finish line and assume the starting grid with your bicycle. Attention, this new rule, infield access now is closed. Those patrons with an infield pass may not re-enter the infield until the race is completed. Well, as we wait for Brother Patrick Hyde, riders hit the ready. Everybody getting things put in place. And we'll see the Chevy Camaro right there as our pace car. And we'll do three laps after we do a little more of the pomp and circumstance to get everybody ready before we get to the green flag and begin racing. Just like the Indy 500, you see him line up in the grid, 33 rows. And, and we talked about our founder, Howdy Wilcox. His dad had won the Indianapolis 500 in 1919. And uh, this race has started and patterned after that, the Indianapolis 500. Once again, we and so many of the neat carryovers in the state where racing is huge. Yeah, racing is a very important part of the culture. Um, and. Uh, you know, Little Five is kind of no exception to that, but we, we, we like speed here in the state of Indiana, <laughs> right? And so these women are going to get those bicycles moving today. And we will have some fast riders today, especially on this really hard track. The rain that came in and they got that 
pushed away in the cinder track. Uh, what did they tell us earlier today? Some of the coaches talked about that it felt like asphalt on it. And here's our race information for the day. Bill Armstrong Stadium and our quarter mile cinder track. Maximum amount, 33 teams, four riders per. 100 laps to determine a champion. Any minimum of five exchanges during the race. Here's Brother Patrick Hyde. To honor, to respect, and to pray for all of those people who have been affected by the tragedies in Boston and in Texas this week. So if you would please join me in a moment of silence to honor all of those people. Eternal and all-powerful God, you have created us so that we might strive to be the best and most pleasing to you in all that we do. Bless all of these competitors that they may compete to their fullest capacity and to the best of their ability, that they may be safe, that they might know your abiding presence, and that the disciplines they have developed may be fully exhibited and, and sustained through this race and throughout their lives. We ask you, all-powerful Lord, to watch over and bless all who are gathered here in a spirit of joy and competition. We thank you, wonderful God, for all of the work and dedication of those who work to make this day possible, and we ask you to bless them. We pray in a special way for all of those who have been affected this week by the tragedies in Boston and Texas. May all of us come to know your wonderful love and majesty through the experience of this day. We offer this prayer in your holy name. Amen. Presenting your colors today in the infield, the Pershing Rifles Color Guard from Indiana University's ROTC program. I use Pershing Rifles is a competitive drill and honor squad that consistently receives high marks in national competition. Ladies and gentlemen, and now coming to the platform, we introduce two-time Grammy Award winner and member of Indiana University's faculty from the Jacobs School of Music, Sylvia McNair. Sylvia, of course, an alumnus of Indiana University, originally from Mansfield, Ohio. Please rise, remove your caps, as Sylvia McNair presents our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we washed were so gallantly streaming. the starting riders are coming to the start-finish line and we get ready for racing. We present Indiana University's Acapella Men's Group another round with Back Home Again in Indiana. Woo. 
credentials as a participant or official please move to the stands or spectator areas only properly accredited personnel are permitted in the infield during the race once again riders please be to your starting positions on the track as we continue with our program Student Foundation staff member Jewel Baker. Jewel has been a member of the Student Foundation staff for 25 years. We thank her for those great years of service and please join us in a round of applause as we offer appreciation of Jewel Baker for all she has done for the IU Student Foundation and the Little 500. Keep your head up, good luck, and Godspeed. And now, for the words we've all been waiting to hear, ladies, mount your road muscle bicycles. <laughs> Little 500 bicycles. They'll do a few warm-up laps, three to be exact, and then we will drop the green flag and get the 26th running of the women's little 500 underway. It is windy, it is cold, and it's beginning to spit a little snow. Yeah, truly the strongest is going to endure today, Rich. They're going to need to uh, 
Um, <laughs> they're going to need to buckle down and, and win this one with fortitude and strength. It's not a, not ideal bike racing conditions, but, the, but then again, you have what you have, and they're going to go out and give it their best shot. One of the great events in America. The race is next when the 26 running of the Women's Little 500 on Access TV returns. You wait a year to get to this point. And it all comes down to this, that you can see them, I think they're on their second warm-up lap here. You see the front row, Kappa Kappa Gamma, Jackie Stevens, you see Delta, Delta Gamma up in the front row. That's, or I'm sorry, that's Wing It. And then you got Kappa Alpha Theta on the outside of row one. And in row two, the Delta Gamma are defending champs, Teeter, who everybody has a little asterisk by. It's a team to watch and where they're located in the pits. So many storylines to follow throughout. Gamma Phi Beta, team I used to coach. Uh, wish the girls well today. Sonia Arneson is down there coaching them. The little sister. A little family connection for Hans. There's, Trying to get a number one victory today for Gamma Phi Beta. And there's a lot of family connections uh, throughout this race. You see Pi Beta Phi there on row four. They're a team that won in 2009. The 2013 Women's Little 500 is underway. And you see Kappa Kappa Gamma taking it strong right out of the gate there. That's Jackie Stevens on the bike for them. An experienced rider, and she, she knows the safest place to be and the best place to be on the track is in that pole spot. That's absolutely right. You want to be at the front, especially in these first few laps. You never know what's going to happen, so you're going to see a lot of jockeying for position right here. You see Winget tucked tightly on her wheel. That's Melissa Moeller on the bike for Winget. She's got a lot of a, a lot of experience on her hands. She's fourth in ITTs, and this is her uh, her third little 500. And coming down this. First piece of the track, the wind is at the rider's back, and the wind is significant here today. And then as they get into the backside, they'll have to pedal against it. Yeah, and you see them right now hitting that wall, Rich. They're coming out of turn two, and it's a good, you know, 20 mile per hour wind that they hit right out of the gate. Um, so that's going to cause a little bit of havoc on the back stretch. It's going to slow down and bunch up, as you see right now. You see a good eight, nine riders wide there. That's right. You also see eight, nine teams that are already. Uh, Losing this up straight away there within the first two laps. Well, Hans, you talked about that, that the teams who have lifted weights, who have trained, and really put in the time to be strong would be able to pedal through that wind, and those who haven't may get exposed early. That's absolutely right. I think those strong teams are actually looking forward to this 100-lap race and separating themselves, really showing their strength, flexing their muscles out there. Speaking of strength, you got Teeter on the front. That's Emma Coughlin. Um, Emma's a very experienced rider. Her older brother David rode for the rode for the Cutters. Emma with a top 10 finish in ITT and missing out. I mean, I really think Teeter's going to ride aggressively today. Their coach Chris Wytowicz has had his couple little 500 wins in his belt as well, and he always rides an aggressive race. So I think you know Teeter's looking to get some laps in early, but ready to pick up the pace in the second half. Laps yeah. 50 to 100. Chris Wytowicz, the only person in Little 500 history to, as a rider, lap the field and then coach a team that lapped the field. So he's, he's looking forward to today's competition. Delta Gam, the defending champs, now to take the lead. It would be fun to see, Kel I think that's Kelsey Phillips on it the is. bike for, for, for DGs, and she rode a huge first set last year, upwards of 20 laps. So she's really, in their sprinter, Rich, as you remember, and Casey, there's our Casey first wreck. oh, big wreck on the, on the back side. That was coming out of turn two, right where the, right where the headwind is. And the riders trying to get their bikes back and untangle themselves, and we have a pair of riders still down. See, Pi Phi was caught up in that wreck. Some of the teams that didn't get a chance to start up front weren't able to quite move up front there. They got caught up in a little bit of the carnage on the backside. And a look, and just uh, oh, so that's right on. That that is a strong team. You saw her just kind of bumping arms, bumped wheels uh, with a, with a woman ahead of her, and it went down. Never had a race without one of these, and then literally like dominoes, when things start to fall, 
Well, one leads to the next. The Rainbow Cycling would like to maybe get some of the brunt of that well, landing on the gutter, and that's the cement area. And Rich, you caught it. Uh, Kappa Delta went down. You know, a team that's won the race in the 2000s. She had just drifted a little bit too far back and got caught up in that wreck. Emma Piveda as well in the purple. And we're under the yellow flag. And let's check in with Jill Savage. Thanks, Rich. We were notified before the race started that Teeter was going to have to have a two-second penalty for not attending a race earlier this week. They have already gotten that done under the yellow flag. Emma Coughlin went in as soon as she could over to the penalty box. So they are all taken care of there and are back on to the race, Rich. Yeah, thanks, Jill. And they didn't, you know, Coach White Toich didn't think that was going to be a big problem. Hans, you had to serve a penalty the year that you were the champion. Coach White Toich talked about it that, you know, it's unfortunate. You get a little piece of miscommunication. Some people don't show up where you think they're going to be. He said, the ruling is the ruling. We'll serve it and quickly move on. That's right. It is unfortunate. There's a number of circumstances where you can incur a penalty. Uh, but two seconds is not too much. I mean, Chris is right there. He's, he knows how to handle it. He knows that uh, he told me before the race they were going to try to serve the penalty under yellow. So they were prepared. They, the riders knew what to look for, when to serve it, and how to react. And you want to serve it under yellow because the pace slows down, so you lose less distance against the field because they're they're running at a much slower pace, obviously for safety concerns. So um, great timing, in fact, for Teeter. We, don't, we never like to see a wreck in the little 500, but as far as Teeter's concerned, um, they were able to serve that here early and are probably going to get back into the pack. Still under the yellow flag. Six laps into the 26th running of the women's little 500 here at IU. The world's greatest college weekend. Sometimes when you hear people say world's greatest about anything, you think they might be over the top. I don't think uh, you guys are too far off on that one. This is a wonderful weekend to watch uh, everybody come back with the pride of being a Hoosier. Training staff still working on some of the riders. Victoria Bird, the senior. And she was the one who ended up landing right on the gutter area that is cement. So that, that's Team Rainbow down there. In fact, mm -hmm. I stopped by to ask them a little bit about it. They're, they're, they're named Rainbow, um, in fact, for equal rights, um, regardless of influence or decisions that people make in their lives, which is, which is a great cause. So representing GLBT and the Rainbow Cycling Team. And you see a the Rainbow Pit trying to no shortage of colors down there, right, Rich? We no, call that the Rastafarian jersey that they've got on. <laughs> and no shortage of concern right now for their teammate. Kappa Kappa Gamma, Delta Gamma, Kappa Alpha Theta, and wing it as well, and everybody under the yellow caution flag, just keeping that steady pace, and you have to be careful not to creep at this point. That's right. Uh, creeping is when you're advancing, you're improving your position under yellow, improving your position to the leader of this race. So the team out there, it looks to be Kappa and Green, is leading the race at this time. They can set the speed. They're kind of told by the pit judges on the, uh, the judges on the infield here as to what speed they should ride. And then every other team is supposed to maintain their distance to the leader. So you can, you can talk to the judges on the infield and ask them, you know, am I going the right pace, am I not? They'll try to tell you if you're going too fast or not, but if you've been warned and you, you don't slow down, you will be given a penalty for creeping. Well, even though these, these are under yellow, that these do, you know, these laps do count, which in essence shortens the race. It does shorten down the race, Rich, and it slows down the race. And these, in these cold conditions, and actually the women might not like it that much. They, they want to be out there and they want to be, be pedaling, working very hard right now. Um, we're at lap eight, so this has been a, uh, a longer yellow than normal. Hopefully we can get back to green here soon. And, and hopefully that rider is all right who crashed with Rainbow Cycle. Still in the yellow flag conditions, eight laps have been scored. That was Victoria Bird who went down for Rainbow Cycling. 
And you see a lot of the contenders still up front, right, Hans? We've got Kappa Kappa Gamma. Um, they're the leader on yellow. You got yeah, Kappa Alpha Theta. Yeah, you got Delta, Delta Gamma, Gamma and Winget. When it's the team there in black, so a lot of the favorites are together. And what kind of things are you thinking about as, as, as it's getting ready to go back to green? Well, these top teams right now, they they, they want to shed every other team that they can. They want to make this a fast race, and uh, they want to try to break it up. It's going to be safer for them uh, and everybody else if it's a smaller group, not having such so many people so wide going into all the turns. So they're going to look at this, and uh, I think we're going going to go green in a couple laps here, and I think they're going to pick up the pace. You'll see. Uh, them surge probably for four to six laps, uh, keeping it as fast as they can. Yeah, and they might want to drive it a little bit because remember, Teeter served that penalty, right? So Teeter's about as straight away back from the leaders. And remember, Teeter is one of our most balanced, strongest teams um, in the race. So I really think that, you know, Cap is Cap Alpha Theta, DG, Wing It, um, a little bit of camaraderie, a little bit of teamwork, maybe to try to drop Teeter now. Put yeah, in a little a, bit of trouble. That's a great point. That's exactly right. I forgot about that. The Teeter's off the back right now. They're definitely going to be working to keep them some distance away from Teeter. Teeter's a huge threat in the race today. I think every other team, they should be talking amongst themselves right now saying, hey, let's work together. Let's. I'll take half a lap pole, then you pull. Let's rotate through. Teeter is completely isolated. And I mean, Teeter, three of their riders finishing the top 10 of ITT. And you talk about balance and strength one on one team. Yeah, they've got all kinds of strength. And so, I, you know, I think, but, but the, one of the factors today is the weather. And, and when you're all alone in this wind, it's a tough place to be. We'll see, we'll see what happens now. Back to green. And the stronger riders and the leaders, Kappa Kappa Gamma and Delta Gamma, are gonna start Lapping riders here early with just 11 lap score. And you can see it's all string out, strung out there on the back stretch, which really helps teeter a little bit. They're going to start to get a draft here soon and we'll want to work, work back up through the pack. Kappa Kappa Gamma with a strong lap right there, turning it over. Yeah, teeter is just turning it on. They've caught back to the pack. I mean, it's very strung out right now, but they're able to find a draft here and pick and bob and weave their way through the pack. You know, these women are impressive. They're, they're doing sub, you know, around 40 second laps right now in this wind. So they're really turning it over. You can see DG pull through, her back's flat. She's just trying to be as arrow as she possibly can into that 20 mile an hour wind on the back stretch. Emily Lovig. That's still Kelsey Phillips on the bike, the senior finance major. And, and you do see them working a little bit together yep. now, right? We see them trading pulls on the front. So you saw uh, Cap has taken a strong pull. Now Wing is taking a strong pull. So these women are teaming up out there. Really smart racing. Teeter has made it into the pack, but unable to advance right now because the pace is quick from Kappa Kappa Gamma and Delta Gamma. And that's Emma Coughlin on the bike for Teeter. She's a, uh, a very, very strong rider, but she's done a huge set right now and has had to bridge. So her challenge is not to be 15 riders back right now or so, but is try to get back up there in the top five where she can get out of trouble. From Bloomington, Indiana, a local girl. Kappa's pull off, and I, you know, nobody really pulled through there. Um, and see, that's what they need to keep it hot. So you see the team there in the red. Who do we have? Who do we have there? Rich pulling through, trying to trying to keep it hot. That's Melanzana, the team in the red. And Teeter finally comes in for an exchange. So Emma with a huge first set, serving that penalty, catching back up to the pack, handing off to Lisa Hutchinson. Hutchinson, the sprinter. With the Teeter team, the Teeter team that we reckon throughout this 100 lap race. And now you've got a fresh rider on, so I don't see, I don't see too much risk. I see her probably, probably getting back up with the leaders here. I see her making her move on the outside in turn two. Indeed they do, and they're right back in it. That's right, Lisa is fired up. I was talking to her earlier before the race. She is fired up about this race. 
she feels very confident about the training program that she's had with Woj. She told me that there's, they're not doing particular rides. They're doing workouts. They're going out there. They're lifting weights once a week. They're doing intervals. Uh, they're doing some hard workouts that she feels will play to her advantage uh, with the wind today. They make it a little bit harder. Well, that was a the theme. There were a lot of confident teams that we visited with. Then a lot of people that you went up and had the conversations with, and when you asked how they were going to approach it, what the strategy was, at the end of it, they would usually tag it with, and if we can get that done, we like our chances. If we get that done, we think we can win. You've got to have the confidence, absolutely. You've got to have the confidence out here if you're going to win, and it's great to see that. You know, one of the consensus that I heard talking to some of the top teams is, there's great sprinters on all of the teams and seniors and veterans, but they all kind of want to shake it up is what it sounded like. Yes. They didn't want to wait and gamble at the end. They want to take the chance to create the chaos ahead of time. I asked a couple of the riders, what would you change about last year? And it was just that. It was not react to other teams, but this year I want to make those teams react to me. So it's going to be fun to see that strategy play out and see how they have to respond to one another. Casey Dukes has proven that she can win a sprint and win a race. Some of the other people competing will think about, you know what, I'm not necessarily certain I want it to come down the last handful of laps and deal with her. That's very true. They may not want to deal with her. And what's funny, Casey Dukes almost feels the same way. Even though she's confident she has yes. won sprints, she's told me the same thing. I want to shake it up. I want to make some moves, be aggressive, and lay our cards out there and make people react to us. But. That's not a bad uh, backup plan to have when you have a sprinter like Casey Dukes. We heard a saying down there today, Rich, and it was uh, Deja Dukes. <laughs> there you go. The other teams on the track are not hoping for a Deja Dukes. And um, Kelsey, of course, went in last year on, la on la lap 100. So she's shooting for that repeat performance. See Alpha Kyle Mega out there pulling hard right now. Teeter sitting second. And we've got an exchange if we can get ahead of the pack. Wingett's coming in for their first exchange. Alpha Kai Omega not trying to lend any ground there for that, that gap on the Wingett exchange. Great exchange, though. Puts her right back in it. Yeah, good, good gap on that first set by Melissa Roller. Wingett coming out strong. and going right back to the front. I like the strategy. You gotta stay out of trouble. You wanna make people react, go right back up to the front and start setting the pace. So what about Alpha Chi Omega though, up there? The team in blue, you know, we didn't have them on our radar early. You see, now you see Cap Alpha Theta, I think that's on the outside, coming in for an exchange. Is AKO still pulling hard? Another yeah, Tharnstorm on the bike for Alpha Chi Omega. And you know, at the Open, we talked about this. There are teams in this race, each year that we've done it, that make noise that not a lot of people talk about coming in. Yeah, and it's a real, it, 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 it's, a, it's a great thing to see in the women's race. In fact, they're coached by a, uh, a former rider from Phi Gamma Delta who won in 1995. So he's, he's got these women trained and he's got them riding really strong and aggressive out of the gate. I like it. I like the strategy. I mean, especially at this point in the race, stay up front, keep riding hard. Uh, and the benefit of this race, what's so great is you've got a team event with four riders. You can go out there and ride super hard, spend, burn a couple matches, and then come exchange, get off the bike, have a little bit to eat, have a drink, and rest up, get ready for round two. Make the other teams work hard. So I, I like the strategy of riding hard out there. That's one of the fun things about Little Five. You don't see a normal bike racing, right? They, all the riders have pits, right? So kind of what happens in the pit is a, is a whole story in itself. You've got, you know, lap counters and you've got boards, you've got food, and, you know, you're in there you're in there resting before you get back on the bike. You just don't see that in any other event. You don't. It's very unique. I love that about this race. It's a team event. You have to rely. You have to trust. Uh, you have to build up that trust throughout the season. Here we see our pole position team, team in green, Kappa Kappa Gamma coming in for their first exchange. It's a bike exchange. And because of the good gap, the good gap there, right, so Kappa gets right back in on the front. Good set there. Is that still Jackie Stevens who rounded out a big first set? Hands it off to Losev. So over, over 20 laps there as we're on 22 for Jackie Stevens. 
So a shorter set here for Lisa Hutchinson, Teeter's number two rider. Is Ashton DeHaan getting on for Teeter. And Teeter would like to keep Hutchinson to some shorter sets so that if they can, you know, get her down to the final seven laps so she can get in, get comfortable, and then try to win it in the sprint if that's what it's going to take. Where, where she's fresh. She, she, when she was talking before the race, she said she was on the last lap last year and she got beat. And she said, you know, I learned so much last year just by being there. I feel prepared this year. And you've got to believe that. And the team's a little bit, you know, better prepared as well. That's exactly right. I think uh, experience and awareness is so important. And you see DG here getting set up for uh, an exchange. And, and that's one, that, one thing that they have is experience. They, I think they have seven little five races under their belt between three of their veteran riders. They do. So, That's the most of anybody, Hans, and they're going to come in for their first exchange. And Pam Lobig told us that you know, DG's, she t coaches them so they can coach themselves. And she said it's not a number set number of laps. You ride until you've left it all out there, and then you give it up to somebody else. And here's Pam's sister, Emily Lobig, now on the bike which is a really progressive thought in regards to coaching. You know, years ago, coaches would write down all the laps that every rider was going to ride and have all this strategy before the race. And, and the trend now in the race is to equip the riders to essentially react and, 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 and have the ability, just like you said about Pam, she trains her riders to be able to react and, and do their own thing throughout the race and keep racing. Well, we've had some good exchanges throughout the day. Sometimes that can be a bit of a mystery uh, for teams, but so far, so good between everybody today on the exchange end. Well, it's something that you have to do well in the little 500. You just can't afford to drop an exchange or have a mechanical during one or wreck and take somebody out. You know, there you can see the bike to bike exchange. So in, in the little 500, each team only has two sets of bikes. So if you're at different seat heights, um, you're essentially doing that bike to bike. And here the riders are of the same height, Oh, and that's not what you want to do, right, Hans? That's exactly right. You do not want to fall down. This is a good example of an exchange. They had a great gap. This is a bike-to-bike -bike exchange. And like uh, Jason was mentioning, with riders of different heights, you've got a mechanic on the infield who has this second bike at all the times when it's not on the track. They may be adjusting the seat height, the handlebar height. They're getting it set up and dialed in for that next rider who's going in to the race. Sometimes when you have inexperienced riders, and we've seen this in the past, they don't understand about all the traffic coming behind you and trying to come in for exchanges and not understanding the entirety of what's going on in the race. And we've seen some scary accidents just from people who are focused on trying to get in for an exchange and not knowing all the traffic that's around you. It is such a work of art. In fact, you know, we use the term on the front stretch, you know, sometimes when it looks pretty, it looks like a ballet. And on the back stretch, when it looks real ugly, it looks like a circus. It's all over the place, right? So when you're well, when, you're, when you've had a couple years under your belt and you know what's going on, you know, you, your goal is to make it kind of a, a ballet, if you will, a work of art. And a lot of these women do. In fact, as Hans has noted, you know, this is one of our deepest, most experienced women's team, or women's field. So, you know, I anticipate a lot of good exchanges today in a very competitive race. That's a good point about the backstretch and uh, how sometimes it's a circus. And it's worth pointing out that Teeter, they chose the pit position that's the last pit on the backstretch. You can choose your pit position based on uh, how you qualify for the race. They like to be at the end, but what that creates a little bit of confusion with some of these other teams who may have qualified lower and who may be more of a circus in the backstretch. They've got to watch out for that and make sure that they're staying safe when they bring the bike in and out for exchanges. See Winget still on the front there. Winget's riding a great, great race. Bree Kovac is their coach. They've yet to win, but they're riding like champions today. That's right, and Bree Kovac was a champion uh, for Teeter. That's right. We get, they've got two coaches down there. One's Sarah Fredrickson from Roadrunners and Bree Kovac from Teeter, so they've got a lot of knowledge in their pit. Joining the quest for glory, the ladies of Rainbow Cycling, riding for both purpose and a spirit of competition. Whether it's for your sorority sisters or to just flat out stand atop the podium on race day, most teams take to the track with one goal in mind, winning. But since 2006, the women of Rainbow Cycling have been quietly solidifying their place among the powerhouses, while ever mindful of IU's GLBT community. 
able to recruit members even though we're not the most successful team and we're not the strongest riders because we're riding for a cause and that's really unique. There aren't that many teams that are doing that. So I think that kind of attracts people to ride to us. To be on the team, you don't have to be gay or lesbian, but if you support the spirit of competition, I think it just gives me that little extra boost just that I am riding for something. It's not just my friends or people that I know, it's other people too. I feel like this race is very Greek dominated, so a lot of people have these huge support bases because their whole house, their sorority or fraternity will come out and support them. And because we're riding for this cause and to represent this group of people, they also come out and support us. And that feels really good to also be a part of something. Last year in the women's 25th anniversary, um, it was, I felt really proud being a woman in the race because we haven't always had that equality. Before 25 years ago, women rode tricycles in the Little 500 and we've come so far. Just knowing that we can do what the men do and it's shown now and people believe it, it makes you feel really good. Well, nice story there and Victoria Bird injured early in this race. Went over the handlebars and that pile up and landed on the cement gutter and had to be tended to by the training staff. And we're back to racing inside here at Armstrong Stadium. And there she's out of the tent. That's the good news and arm in a sling. That's the bad. And you see that a lot in cycling. I, it, yeah, I don't know if it's collarbone or what it is, but a lot of times when you go down and you roll over the handlebars, you, you do throw off a collarbone. So she's going to be okay. She won't be riding today, but yeah, it's good to see her up and walking. It could be a wrist, it could be a collarbone. Uh, both are not fun to break, but it's good to see her up and walking around. And supporting her teammates. All, all spring she's been out there with her teammates, and she's not going to let them down now. She's right there supporting them. That's great. Here we see DG getting set up for another exchange. Oh, do we see two? This is the ballet effect on the, on the front side. You got DG's, DG's and now here Kappa Kappa Gamma as well, both going to exchange. And you know, that's what Teeter talked about being on that back side. He said, you know, Coach said they can't, they can't tag us and target us uh, much like, you know, they would do in the past. Well, and, and what Teeter's doing right now, they're cute, they're cute a little bit off the Kappa Kappa Gamma and DG exchanges on the front. So they get to see it first, and then hopefully they, they ride a wheel out and then they get a big gap down the back stretch. And they're going to do an exchange themselves and try to keep pace. That's Mackenzie Lloyd getting on the bike for uh, for Teeter, a first-year rider out of Bloomington, Indiana. And she probably won't ride a ton in this race. So right now she's getting on, trying to feel it out a little bit, shake her legs out. Um, and she won't have a big limit to, to ride too far back in the pack. Coach Waitoich, I know, will, will want her to drive forward and get up front in one of those top four or five positions. Yeah, we should see if we can get a shot of Woj. He's got the whiteboard out. I want to see what he's writing to his rookie on the on the track there. And words of advice, words of encouragement. He's always animated out there. He's got a capital P on it. What's that mean? I, you know, I think it means move up. <laughs> move you know, up. so you're not ten back in this mean? race. Little 500 is a race where you want to be riding on the front or near there. Cap Alpha Theta. Oh, and we haven't talked a lot about Kat Chol Cholminiak. That's who's on the bike right now for Cap Alpha Theta. Um, a great program. Theta with four wins. And, and Kat, a great performance last year, finishing second. She's back, and she's you know, doing every, everything she can to get that number one slot this year. That's right. She finished second last year in a very close sprint. I think she let it out from uh, lap 99 all the way almost to the finish, almost had it. But she took that very personally, the loss. Uh, said that she couldn't watch any race tapes until February of this this winter but now I think she's fired up and she's she's understanding that it's bigger than just her this is a team event uh, she's fired up and ready to go we saw that she won the time trials this spring one of the spring series events uh, she's got more experience 
uh, talking to their coach Ryan Knapp, they have the mental game now. I don't think they were mentally prepared for that loss and where they were last year, but now they're they're mentally better. And you know we're going to try to do some things to keep her a little fresh right at the end, as opposed to just letting her do so much of the heavy lifting throughout the entire race. I think that's exactly what you need to do. You need to balance some of the laps with your other riders on the team and then when it comes down to it you know that you have one of the best riders in the track and the saying on their team is in Kath we trust and he said that for last year you know it, it but we saw what we saw this year I think Kat started the race and finished the race for him that last year she's gotten a little help so far this year Rachel yes. Method started the race for Cap Alpha Theta and I don't think Kat's ridden quite as many laps early and had as much pressure on her uh, so far this year so again trying to save her just like you guys said I think uh, you might see a fresher better Chominiac at the end of this year's race I need to get that one well, you get it. You give us, you know, 10 or 15 degrees warmer tomorrow, you'll be dialed in on that one. It's chilly up here. <laughs> Make your face freeze. No question. And, and Kat's a, just a heck of a rider. You can see her tucked in there, number two, behind 5U and Kappa Kappa Gamma. And Teeter floating around there on the outside. You know, when we were on the track early, it's kind of interesting. Teeter likes to ride in an outside position because they feel if there's a wreck on the inside, they can get around it easily that way. Um, with all the rain that we've had, it makes it a little bit easier to do so. The, the, the track is much more compact, you know, farther wide away from the gutter than it ever has before. So Teeter riding in a comfortable, you know, third on the outside position right now. Yeah, you're right. The track looks great. The track looks fast. The corners are pretty good. I've heard in other years that people are worried about this part of the track or this corner. I asked a few riders today, they didn't have much to say about it. They said that it's faster than they've seen. They really liked that it rained last night makes this track sit down, uh, ride very well. Even though it's windy, you don't see any dust blowing around. Right. That can be terrible for a rider for a couple of reasons. One, it's loose when you're riding, but also uh, it can be getting up in your mouth. You're eating the cinders when you're out there. Today, it looks great. And you see all the teams queuing off Teeter right there. You saw, you heard a big roar on the front side because the sororities, um, Cap Alpha Theta, Alpha Chi Omega, and Delta Gamma are all right on Teeter's wheel. They're just marking her so well. She's trying to get a gap for that for that exchange, and the sororities weren't letting her have it. Teeter going to come in and do the exchange. That's going to be tough for them to get a gap all day. Teams out here know that they have a big target on Teeter's back. They're going to be watching back on her. the bike. There's a first set for a first year rider out there. It's a great uh, feeling. It is a great feeling to get off the bike for the first time. She'll get a bunch of high fives in the pit, a couple yeah. slaps on the back. And, and she's going to be more relaxed now coming into the, her next set, knowing that she kept her team in it. She did her job and she could do it again. So we've, we've got a, a big women's field here today and a lot of teams on the lead lap. We currently are riding on our Soviet flag. We're seeing on the, on the lead lap, we're seeing Kappa Kappa Gamma. We're seeing Winged Cycling. We're seeing Kappa Alpha Theta. We've got Delta Gamma, of course, and Teeter. Chi Alpha Chi Omega, the number 18. Number 9, Melanzana. 11, Cruise Cycling. 17, Zeta Tau Alpha on the lead lap still. And number 18, 5U. A lot of teams. A very competitive women's race. Sarah Waters out in front for Alpha Chi Omega. She's going to push it for an exchange. Oh, and you see her just fighting that headwind on the backstretch. Just absolute agony torturing the pedals right now. Just trying so hard to get a gap for her teammate. She's got a little one. But really, this is one of the windiest years I've seen, guys. I mean, it's it's howling down the backstretch. It's just tough to get anywhere. And it's been constant throughout. Oh, it yes, not, it's not going to let up in the afternoon at all. Off Kai Omega. We get the exchange off. 42nd lap out of 100. The women's little 500 from Armstrong Stadium. And the, the thing about that 46-18 gear, you know, once you get it topped out and you can't, you can't turn it over any faster, there's no switching gears. There's no like easier way to go. You're just kind of, you're pegged. And you saw off of Kyle Omega just peg herself right there, get a good gap and bring it into her teammate. She did, she did a great job. I mean, it's a tough gear to turn over in a headwind like this. Um, you gotta give it everything you have just to try to make it down that back stretch. 
I think uh, otherwise you want to try to find a wheel. If you're not going for a burnout, you want to try to find a wheel and conserve as much energy as you can in the back. Wing it. Able to transfer the bike over to the exchange. Now you talk so much about those lead teams. Now we've got a pack of 10 all bunched together out in front, jockeying throughout. Uh, we said, we thought this was going to be a really tight and exciting race. We're not halfway through yet. It's shaping up to be just that. It's shaping up to be a great finish. You know, you've got so many competitive teams and you've got this serious headwind. I, you know, I, I know that they're thinking the last half of the race they're going to make it. And, and with this headwind, it's just tough to take too much out of your opponents. You know, they're looking to kind of sit in right now and eat up some laps as we're on lap 42. Yeah, you're right, Jason. I thought, uh, talking to teams earlier, like I mentioned before, they want to have strategy to, to mix it up before a sprint, but I really think reality is setting in and finding out how hard it is to do that and how much effort it's going to take to get away. Uh, we're going to see here soon, I think, if somebody tries to make a, a real good attempt at an attack, but they may not be able to. It may prove to be too difficult. Not a smooth exchange for Kappa Kappa Gamma. And you see the teams on the front there. That's Wing It and Teeter. You got a Delta Gamma exchange coming in, our defending champion. They're not trying to allow too big a gap, but the DG Rider just did a tremendous job. Bringing it in. I think that's Dukes bringing it in. Back to Kelsey Phillips. You're not seeing it on the screen, but she's going to enter very near the front. There she is. Great set out of Casey Dukes. Great burnout. Great way to set up her teammate. You know, she, she's just looked fit all spring out here. She won, she won missing out in a very similar fashion to winning the race last year. She's got all kinds of targets on her back. I mean, the question will be, can she deliver? She's got all kinds of pressure today. Dukes, the senior, trying to Keep the yellow jersey for Delta Gamma. We'll step aside and break away from racing. This is the 26th running of the women's a little 500 from Armstrong Stadium. Student body out in force. And what you hear all weekend when you're around here is there are memories that will last a lifetime. And we've seen a few spills, but yeah, indeed, Looking great. To win the Little 500 would be just the icing on top of my college experience. Not only an individual thing, but a, a team goal that kind of develops through your college years. It would really incorporate being a part of an IU tradition and self-fulfillment. To win the Little 500 for me would be the, the culmination of my college career. Uh, it would be a validation of the lifestyle of hard work and training that I've lived for the past year and really just, a, just an excellent capstone to four great years here at Indiana University. Back inside Armstrong Stadium, Rich Cellini, Jason Sonneborn, Hans Arneson, Jill Savage down on the infield. 2013 Women's Little 500. 100 laps around the quarter mile cinder track and we've seen some people making some moves. Now DG gonna make a move. We have the women's race today, men's race tomorrow here on Access. That's right, Rich. Delta Gamma's just been getting good gaps throughout the day. They took advantage of a hard teeter pull right there and came whipping around on the outside of turn two. We've seen teams try to turn it over fast and create a little separation. Nobody's been able to do it. Yeah, Tito was doing that just a minute ago. There was something they didn't like. They tried to string it out, make the teams work a little bit harder, but you're right, they weren't able to keep the gap that they wanted to. Um, and we've seen Kappa suffering from that. I, I believe they uh, have just gone off a little bit off the back there, trying to catch back on. That's right, Kappa Kappa Gamma's in a little spot of difficulty right now, 200 meters or so back. They're trying to close, and as this pace slows down a little bit, as Lisa Hutchinson on Teeter pulls wide, Cap is in green, may have a good chance of catching up here. Catching a little bit of a draft off the tail, tail of the peloton. Yeah, she's gonna get a bit, bit of time to rest here. Grab a wheel, get in the draft. And we're at that point in the race where people will settle in a little bit, about halfway through and happen to burn up some laps. 
but that's not what they told us earlier today. I mean, they're, they're doing what we've seen before in years past, but that's not what anybody really talked about. They talked about pushing the pace, creating some separation, yeah. mixing it up, doing some different things, and yet here we are. Right, so if I'm one of the coaches out there, and that was my strategy, was to push the pace, now's the time to do it because, it, like you just mentioned, this is often a time to sit and eat up laps. So you, you want to be strategizing. You want to be looking at the other teams. What rider is on the bike for the other teams? You don't necessarily want to launch an attack when the best riders on the team are on the bike. You want to look at maybe their fourth rider, maybe catch them off guard a little bit, push the pace, make them work a little bit harder, and put them in a state of panic. You just saw just a monstrous gap there for the winger rider, Melissa Moeller. She got a huge gap for her teammate, just setting her up excellently. Get back right with the leaders. All right, let's go downstairs to the teeter pit, and here's Jill Savage. Thanks so much, Rich. Chris Wojtowicz here, head coach of Teeter. You just wrote rest on your whiteboard. You want Is this kind of where you are halfway through, get him down a little bit? She made it, she made it a little bit of an attack, um, and, then, and then she got caught, so I just wanted her to rest so she can get her energy back. Now we got to get her out soon. Okay. I, I got to go. The girls need me. <laughs> no problem, Rich. Back up to you. You know what? That's Jill. Let him go, Jill. Don't hold on to him. That's right. And Coach Matoich has always been very accessible and great to us. But you know what? You see right there from the coaches and Hans, the open you talked about. There are no contracts to renew. There are no sponsors. But you know what? This is extremely important. And you see it right there as a former rider for the Cutters and now Coach and Tito. Yeah, he's very focused. I mean, Chris is a great coach. Uh, I've been down there in the pits as a coach before. And it's very distracting with everything going on. And your vantage point from down there in the pits is hard. Uh, you you want to be aware. And the only way you can communicate with your riders is with the whiteboard, like you see. There's no communication. Communication devices allowed in the race today. So every lap that you're, you're sitting there, what do I want to tell the rider this time? That's your only way to communicate. So I'd say the, the biggest skill that I would try to teach a rider is to have awareness of what's going on. Kind of like Pam Lobig talked about with her riders. You want to try to teach them to be their own coach and have that awareness of how to react to what situation. But as a coach, you can help steer them in different strategies with the whiteboard and, and then prepping the rider who's going in next. You sit there talking their ear for a minute saying, this is what I want you to do, this is what I want you to look out for, and get them ready. Now, Hans, to your point, when we see things go south, it's because of a lack of awareness from riders. That's absolutely right. I mean, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's often with rookie riders, but uh, my best uh, analogy is when you're, when you're a rookie rider, this race, there's so much going on, there's so much to watch out for, all the people, all the distractions, you kind of get tunnel vision. You're, you just zone out, you start staring at the wheel in front of you and you're not picking up your chin you're not looking around that rider in front of you and that can cause crashes but Jason you talked about the first time you compete in this race it just moves so fast for you oh it moves so fast and there's so much going on you know with the you're paying attention to the fans and the flags and the you know announcer and it's tough to kind of really get a gauge and, and what Woj was saying to his, his rider there Lisa had just rest he was trying to get her to settle in so that she could get a gap right just trying to remind her to do the basics so she settled in a little bit caught a wheel and now she was able to come out with a strong gap and in for exchange turned out to be a great set by Lisa Hutchins yeah. right Absolutely. R rode aggressively, got back in, and then got the gap. And Ashton, the sophomore, on the bike now for Teeter. These are teammates with a couple slap on the back. That's what she likes to see when you get in there. That's great. That's great. I mean, she's got to feel good about that. Her team's in a great spot. Put her teammate in a great position. It's exactly what you want to do. Kappa Kappa Gamma, wing it. Kappa Alpha Theta, Delta Gamma, the cast of characters we talked about at the top, right there at the front of the pack. That's right, and they're a very veteran team. I talked about awareness earlier, and with seniors on the team, you almost feel like you have a 360 degree vision of what's going on. Whereas a rookie's got this tunnel vision, they can't see past their shoulders, but a senior, you really feel like you know what's going on on the left and behind you, and, and 10 riders up in front of you, and it plays to their advantage. See all of our key jerseys right there on the front, right? We've got green, our pole sitter, Got yellow, our defending champion, and Teeter, who we've, we've been talking about, they were white for winning the spring series. Three events that we have, individual time trials, missing out, and team pursuit. So Teeter really kind of throwing it down all spring, representing that white jersey. And Teeter champions in 2005, 2010, 2011. 
was dealt to Gamma a year ago and under the lights in the 25th running of the women's little 500 in what was a spectacular race and finish. And we'll have the men's race for you tomorrow, the 63rd running of the men's little 500 and we'll double the lap count to 200. We'll see a lot of excitement in the, uh, the weather's supposed to get a little bit better for tomorrow. So um, the ladies are throwing it down today. It's a great warm up for tomorrow. And now here comes a little push. Yeah, throwing down on the front stretch there. Melanzana, the team in red, they're on the lead lap, falling out a uh, Zeta Tau Alpha Exchange. Zeta was on the lead lap earlier, so both of those teams are. And you can see Zeta Tau Alpha stringing it out. Melanzana going to come in to exchange as well as we queuing off, wing it. Yep. queuing off each other a little bit. You saw two teams with pits next to each other exchanging at the same time. And that comes up in Little Five, doesn't it? I mean, you, you've got a chance to kind of talk to your competitors, but if you got a chance to form an alliance and kind of queue off of each other, you do. And you saw that right there. You're right. And that's, that's the awareness factor that I'm talking about. As a rider, you've got to pick up on those cues because there's not enough time for a coach to communicate, hey, I want you to grab their burnout. There's not enough time for that. So the rider has to know that. And they're going to see that and they're going to take it as a free ride, free burnout on the track. Well, we've had a relatively clean race but not completely clean. Not completely, you saw a little bit of bumping of elbows there. If you're not bumping, you're not rubbing, you're not racing, and a lot of people went down right there. A lot of young ladies, you see a little bit of a pile up. And then just a, a minor one in that right there, lack of awareness, what we're talking about, where one rider coming in to try to make an exchange just yeah. doesn't pay attention to who's around him. It's a little bit of that circus on the back stretch there, I think, doing an exchange. Not the ballet, I got a ticket to the circus. Not the ballet, sir, your tent is over there. Just kind of kept coming wide, coming wide, coming wide, and next thing you know, you're on the cinders. Wow. See Alpha Kai, Kai Omega there on a, with a big gap, um, you know, coming down the back stretch. Alpha Kai Omega team in blue. You can hear Chuck Trapp say it as well. Alpha Kai with a big gap. We're coming up on lap 61, I believe, and you know, if I'm a coach and I want to make this race aggressive and I want to shake things up. In the women's race, being only 100 laps, I'm thinking around lap 70 is when I want to try something. I want to start throwing down some effort, see if that gap will hold, like Woj mentioned. Wasn't able to hold the gap that they wanted to, but make a very uh, focused attack on lap 70. Yeah, and I think we're going to start seeing it heat up. I mean, sometimes the first one doesn't stick, it's the counter, the second or third attack that works. So you're going to see him start shaking out the legs, and I see, we're going to see a little bit, little bit more action now. Um, with so many teams on the lead lap, you've got to be starting to try to you know, limit your competitors and drop a couple of those. You see DG taking a strong pull in the front now. It's Kelsey Phillips. And you're constantly reevaluating your plans. As a coach, uh, you may have a number of game plans set up. You've got to reevaluate and then look at the lap count, look at how many riders you have, that, uh, what their lap count is for each rider, and judge and assess, okay, I want to put you in for this many laps and do this many exchanges. Try to think about your end game right now. Melanzana riding a nice race as well. And they'll come in off the red for the exchange, but it's... Phillips, who eats up a lot of laps for the DGs in the yellow jersey. And you got to be feeling good, right? You know, Casey Dukes, their sprinter, not on the bike right now. Phillips, number two out there, just eating laps up heavy. Here we are on number 62. I think she did over 50 laps last year. That's yes. more than half of the race. That's impressive, really impressive. The 26th running of the Women's Little 500 on Access TV will be right back. Race day is a calm chaos. As soon as you step through the fence and you're on the infield, everything else doesn't exist anymore. It's only you and your teammates in the track. 
Race day is the culmination of all of the trash talk and banter and competition that builds up uh, throughout the year. One day that you train every single day work to work up towards and it's just the time to see all your friends, all your family standing up behind you, supporting you. It's sort of the culmination of all of your efforts and all of these you know, thousands of miles and hundreds of hours of training that you've put in over the past 12 months and even years before. While we were away, had another mishap on the track. And that's a team on the lead lap right there, Rich. That's Phi Mu, um, who was on the team lap. Looked like she just put a foot down, got a little bit out of control, a little bit squirrely going into the corner. That wind may have played a factor in it. And to the bike mechanic we go to get the bike back in working order. He's got the Allen wrench handy, making sure the seat height is set. Yeah, those guys are so important to your team. I mean, they're, they're ready for any situation. They've got extra parts on the infield. They're quick to react. They've got their their bike uh, stand there ready to fix anything. Well, you two understand this better than anybody, but we talk about team, it's not just the four riders and a coach. Yeah, it, it, with only two bikes, I mean, Hans's point around the mechanics is huge. I mean, if one bike goes down and you have people with different seat heights, you, you, it, no, no moss, right? So you've right. got to get both those bikes running. And Rich, as you mentioned, there's a whole support network around him. You've got a student coach in the pit, you've got a head coach, you've got you know, um, your family and friends and everybody behind you, and it kind of all packs into a support network that you are so grateful and so lucky for. And you can't forget about the Student Foundation who puts on this race, you know, and it wouldn't even be a race without the, uh, the, the volunteer students in the IUSF. Kai Omega on the lead. Kyle Omega just riding a great race. We, we didn't talk about him beforehand, but they've got some experience and they're just, they're riding up front, and riding in great position and uh, showing their strength. Sarah Waters. Fighting for position and now Teeter. Able to move the front. And so, you know, Hans, one of the things that I'm seeing, I wonder if you're seeing as well, I've seen Teeter kind of do a lot of, lot of laps on the front. I've seen Delta Gamma riding aggressive. Kappa Kappa Gamma always rides on the front. You can see him right there. And the one the one that's kind of been sitting back a little bit is Cap Alpha Theta. Yes. No, number two last year. <laughs> How rested do you guys uh -huh. think they might be for the, for the finish this year? Well, you know what? I'm looking up at the screen, seeing lap 70 out of 100 and going back to Hans' comment a couple minutes ago that if you're coaching and you're going to make a move, you know, this could be about the time in the race to start thinking about shaking some things up. No, it's, it's great for Theta, for the strategy. I mean, they've been able to ride a safe race. They've been able to draft all day. That means one thing. Chalminiak has got to be rested. Yes. She's got to be looking at chops, ready for a sprint. And is she going to get another opportunity to erase the sour taste of last year when she couldn't hold the lead and just lost out by a wheel to Dukes? I hope so. I hope so. I want to see what happens. I, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see those two yeah. up against each other again. You know, well, last, year, last year, Kat had one ITT missing out. We talked about her the entire time, and she put in a little bit too much effort last year. And you can see Knapp, their coach, his focus was to rest her this year, and they've done that. All right, as we're lap 71, 72 now out of 100, let's check in with Jill. Well, Rich, you were talking about Kappa Alpha Theta. We were talking to them before the race began, and they were saying how there's so much depth and experience this year in the race. Maybe that's one of the reasons why we haven't seen so many crashes, but they also said that towards the end, it's really going to be a mental game, and they need to know their limitations. And I'm sure, Rich, the two guys standing next to you know all about that. Yeah, you know, Jill, your point's well made that they really emphasized and talked about that it wasn't so much physically what happened last year. It's can we accept it and get over it and realize that, look, we were right there. Didn't finish, didn't win. But you know what? Being right there, we're there physically. Can we rebound mentally? And I think they have. I think they have. They've shown it. They qualified third. Uh, they're, they're a well-balanced team. 
They've got one of the best riders here again. Uh, she didn't just give up. She came back here, and she seems as strong as ever. And uh, it, overall, we're seeing that with uh, a lot of seniors this year out on the track, and we're seeing a cleaner race because of that. I, I looked at the top 10 teams in the women's race today, and 42% are seniors. I think that speaks for the safety of today's race. They kind of have that awareness and know what's going on. Well, it speaks to what we're having today, and that's an outstanding race. And next year, we'll have a lot of new fresh, you know, fresh faces that we'll see. You've got a lot of experience, and you know, it, it, learning from those experiences and building blocks are what's what's important. And it certainly looks like you know, Cap Alpha Theta has that has that chance today. And the other thing that kind of comes to mind is with so much experience in their sorority. They've got four wins under the belt. They've got so many great riders, uh, riders like Liz Milne and Ann Holterhoff. They've got a great support network around them. Um, they've got the confidence and they've, now the riders on the, on the track have the experience to come back and win this year. So there you can see Dougal, Cap Alpha Theta. Now we're going to have Wing it. Stretching it to the outside and going to make an exchange. Cap, Cap Gamma in the green. And true Cycling riding a nice race as well. True Cycling riding a great race. Showing a lot of heart, showing some panache, being up with the leaders. Kappa Kappa Gamma, a team there that's ridden, ridden aggressive all race. Going in, for, going in for an exchange, and Theta trying to chase her down. Looks like she's setting up for an exchange as well as uh, with Kappa here. Chamuniak getting on the bike for Kappa Alpha Theta. So there's Kat, their number one rider. This, this, uh, we'll see what happens. She's obviously rested, as we've talked about. She's very strong, so you just, you don't quite know. It could be a good time to go to the attack. Yeah, that's, that's right. There's two things that could happen right now when you're putting your best rider on the track. She could do just that. She could go out and attack, or she could be eating, you know, five, six laps maybe, and then come off, and the next time she'd go on would be to finish the race. Kind of lo loosen up a little bit yeah. before the last set. Yeah. Teeter with an exchange. Lloyd McKenzie back in. And she'll join the pack. Delta Gamma with the exchange. Kappa Kappa Gamma at that moment in for cycling, trying to take advantage. Opportune time, you know, Kappa's just kind of snuck off the front there. Uh, Kappa Kappa Gamma and DG's pits are very near, so I wonder if, you know, they thought there was an exchange and that the Kappas have snuck out. There's a little bit of separation right now. Teeter having to chase. Just plowing into that headwind down the back stretch. It looks hard out there. You can look at their face and see. <laughs> it's been there all day. Yeah. The wind hasn't let up for a minute. Six decades, a little 500 has been going on. A lot of familiar faces in the events. And, and there's people who have put in decades upon decades. And two ladies uh, throughout the years have done a lot to make this event so special. With all the hype and excitement of a professional sporting event, it is difficult to remember the Little 500 is, and always has been, a student-run occasion. Aiding those students are the unsung heroes of the event's support staff. Come in, I have a place for The students will be driving them into the infield on Thursday night. I'll have to admit, I'm from Bloomington, and I have never been to the race. And one of the girls I was working with at the foundation said, I mentioned to her about checking out this job and she said, oh, you don't want to work at the Student Foundation, it's crazy over there. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, that might be what I'd like. I remember walking around on the infield with my husband and my two little boys and just watching, it was exciting. But that's been a few years ago. <laughs> it is hard to think of the Little Five and not recall the event's spectacular crashes. And we've got our first crash at the back of the pack. Absolute carnage. And for the past 45 years, Nancy Macklin has been there to mend those wounds. That looks all completely normal. 
that was in 1973 and the old stadium, which is now an arboretum, uh, it was only men, had no women's race then, and they just went hell bent for leather. They're so much safer now. Uh, certainly they still wreck and have abrasions, a uh, road rash, if you will, but very few fractures, very few serious injuries. Mostly it's just bad scrapes with the black, muddy stuff from the track that gets in. For 63 years, this intramural event has evolved from its humble beginnings into a national spectacle. And even though Jewel and Nancy aren't quite ready to pass the torch just yet, the next 63 seems bright. It's exciting and it's uh, very refreshing to see the students who are actually riding, who have put so much work into it, and to see all the Student Foundation students in the background who have worked so hard to, to get it organized. And it truly is a, a student-run organization, and I get a kick out of telling these old stories. Uh, someday they'll probably tell me, don't stop, we don't want to hear those old stories anymore. Hours and hours of work and, and training by, by our students and by the riders have, have gone into the races and then it all comes together. But it's such a beautiful event, it really is. Uh, back to racing here at Armstrong Stadium. Oh, we've had all kinds of fireworks. We've had a couple attacks, you know, Teeter on the attack. There's Cap Alpha Theta, they were on the attack, coming in for an exchange. They've got a, you know, a 200 meter lead right now. And a fresh rider on. Cap Kappa Gamma going to do an exchange as well, and Teeter's going to try to take advantage. And we're really starting to see it mix up here on lap 81 now. The teams are starting to, you know, cats out of the bag, and things are starting to move. Yeah, we saw Chelminiak do six laps right there. I think she's going to get back on the trainer, like you said, just loosen up the legs of her last set on the bike. But now she's thinking end game, she's thinking sprint, she's thinking how do I set this up to win this year? She wants to make those teams react to her. Teeter doing a lot of work again out in front in the wind. So you've just got a balanced, really experienced, good field this year. You see, you see the racing really coming to life, and you see all these top teams just duking it out at this point. It is. It's still anybody's game. I mean, we've talked about some of the, the top contenders, but still I think we have nine teams on the lead lap, and anybody who's hanging in there to lap 100 has a shot. You know, we haven't talked about them all day, but as a coach, if you don't always have the power to make you know, an aggressive race, your, your strategy is let's get to lap 100 and then we set you up for a sprint. So sure. they do have a plan. We just haven't talked about it. They do have a plan to set it up for one of their riders to sprint for their win. See Teeter on the attack a little bit down the front stretch. Lisa Hutchinson on the bike for, for Teeter. She's got a teammate out. Waiting for an exchange, looking over her shoulder to see how much separation. Melanzana staying right with her, and they're going to swing wide as well. A couple of those teams on the back stretch, both coming in for bike exchanges. That's where communication is so important. You kind of got to know whether you're on that inside slot or the outside slot. You got to talk amongst each other so you can make for a safe exchange. They did it quite well. They did. And that's something they practiced all spring. I mean, the riders here have to come to mandatory track practices from February to April. Any rookie who wants to compete today has to take mandatory rookie hours, rookie week. Uh, there's a lot of work. They have to meet minimum GPA requirements. Delta Gamma and Howie, who after handing this off, it's not a crash, but it's a trip to the cinders anyhow. She was moving. That was a quick exchange, you know, for Delta Gamma. She was moving. It didn't slow down the rider getting on at all. At all. So uh, it may not have looked pretty, but that was clean. And that's just having kind of jello legs when you get off the bike. You can't always keep yourself standing. It's good effort. You know exactly how hard that is, Hans. It's hard to ride and run and then run and then ride and oh. just keep doing it over and over again. Yeah. It's one of those things that just kind of wears on you throughout the little 500. Yeah, awesome. Kyle Mega. Changes riders. 15 laps to go, 14 laps to go now. We've got ourselves a pack. We do, it's a big pack. This is a great race. I'm excited to see the finish here. I don't know what's gonna happen. 
you know, and we've got 5U in there, we've got Melanzana, we've got Alpha Chi Omega, we've got some teams we didn't talk about, which really makes for an exciting finish today. It's, it's kind of hard to script it at this point. It really is. It's exciting to watch, though. Wing it. Getting set up for an exchange right now. Melissa Moeller. Here's the hand it off. And wing it was down. They, they put in a big effort to catch Cap back up. So they are on the lead lap. As are nine other teams. It's a good effort there by Melissa. See, I, I think she's done for the day. I mean, with 13 laps to go, she's done her part. She set up her teammates. We'll see what they have for an end game. It'll be interesting to see what a number of people do with regard to when do you go to your best rider at how many laps? You're going to try to do exchanges and try to have the freshest rider at the end? You're going to let your best rider do the final 10? I mean, what do you want to do from the coaching end? There's a lot of different ways. That's exactly right. There are a lot of different ways. I mean, sometimes you want to set up, uh, start stringing it out right here and uh, burning every rider that you have, setting it up for your final, your sprint your best rider on the track. Um, there's other strategies too. You can send your best rider out early and have them try to get a gap. I mean, I expected that from Teeter today. We haven't seen too much. We've seen a couple efforts, but they haven't been able to sustain a gap that they wanted. Everybody's just looking at each other saying, who's gonna pull? I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit surprised in a way because you know, if you're thinking about all the teams and you know, Casey Dukes won the sprint last year. She won missing out this year. She's been winning the events on the track. You know, okay, you don't want to sprint against Casey Dukes. So now if you're Teeter or if you're Kappa Alpha Theta, you know, if you're Kappa Kappa Gamma, it's a great time to kind of go on the attack. You're 87 in, You're right. Um, you know, it, it, now is the time, 88 in, so you know, now is the time to get aggressive. You're right. As you can see, Casey Dukes just kind of resting down there in the pit. We'll see what the other teams have to offer. You're right. This is the time. If you want to make an effort to not have a sprint at lap 99, this is the time to do it. We'll see what teams want to do. Teeter, Kappa Kappa Gamma, Delta Gamma, Kappa Alpha Theta. Alpha Chi Omega, wing it. They're all keeping a close eye on each other. And, and, you know, what's it like when you're kind of looking around, looking at the other people? Well, it means you're not drilling it that hard, right? Exactly so, you right. know, they've got time to sit up right now and look and see what's going on. I, I'm a bit surprised about, by, you know, Teeter's doing that, to be honest with you, because they were so strong all spring. You know, they seem like the team that wouldn't be looking around. They just wanted to set the pace as hard as they could. I'm very surprised, actually. I mean, we've heard it, and I, I feel that strongly that you need to create the chaos out there. You have your best chance when you set your strategy into play and you make the other teams react to it. But right now, when you see these riders looking at each other, it's almost like they're waiting to queue up for one another. Because it must just be a factor of that win. It's got to be. I mean, it must be so brutal out there and so hard to pull through that nobody wants to be isolated by themselves. Yeah, well, Theta, going to push it hard here, in for an exchange. DG and Teeter teaming up right here. That's a deadly combo. It is a tough combo, and I just thought about this for a second. Cap Alpha Theta used to always do the ghost exchange, if you remember. You know, no rider on the bike, hop off the back. Cap Alpha Theta is now doing the traditional kind of one left leg over, right, set, right side stepping off. A little bit of change there for the program. Teeter going in for an exchange. DG staying out. Oh, they're getting set up. It looks like Casey Dukes getting ready to take the bike. Oh, no, she's coming back in. She's coming out. She doesn't know what to do. And they send her back out. <laughs> They're, they're faking it. We, they're we, going we, for we it. We call that the fakie here at the track. Van Lovig <laughs> waves them on. You've got to ride her out so everybody thinks you're coming in, coming in for a gap, but then you just keep going and burn one more. I love it. Kelsey Phillips on the bike for the defending champ, Delta Gamma. And they're queuing a little bit. You guys at home, you saw that teeter exchange. Emma Coughlin was getting on. They were doing a bike exchange, and you saw a little bit of mishap in the pit. Slow teeter down, and DG just drilling it right now throwing a cat amongst the pigeons, taking it all to the bank right now. And guess what? They've got one of their strongest riders sitting here in the pit, ready to take that bike when they want to. So how many more do you do with Phillips? Lap 92 out of 100. It looks like it's going to be this lap. We're going to exchange right now. And this is the decision you got to make. And, and 
Casey Dukes is a sprinter, but she's got a great lead right now, and she's did she slip on the she pedals a little bit? She pedals a little bit. I mean, that could just be a fraction of a second, but still, you want to maintain that gap as much as you can. She still has it. She still has a lead, and I think she's going to put in the effort now to try to extend that gap. This is it. This is where you make the decision, though. you got to lay your cards all out there and go all out. Decision has been made. Dude's back in the seat, and she's settling in. I think she can do it if she focuses and buckles down and does not look over her shoulder. You can't look back. You, ha you have she to be right dedicated. There. I don't know. I think you just have to be so focused and go for it. And the other teams are just kind of struggling to react. They're trying to get organized back there. The group teeters, teeters now taking on a lot of the duty. Emma Coughlin with a hard pull. Kappa Kappa Gamma sitting on her, her wheel. They've got to team up and see if they can't chase down our defending champion, Delta Gamma. Now, remember, a year ago, Chomeniak had that lead and was sitting on it through a large part of that race and got caught at the very end. And now the tables have been turned a bit as it's Dukes and DG who have the lead. Can they hold it for the rest of the race? That's a very good point. And this is racing at this point. So this may not be what DG had planned, but when you've got a gap, how do you react and how do you go with it? It looks now that the pack is going to catch Dukes from Delta Gamma. It's a great, great effort to come up, catch Dukes. But if you remember last year, Dukes had a gap for a while. Yes, they had a gap, and him, their coach, was telling her, slow down, slow down. Dukes slowed down, got back in the pack, and then won the sprint. And she's telling her this year the same thing, to slow down when she's come around the last two times. And now Teeter. So Teeter probably doing what is their final exchange there, Coughlin to Hutchinson. And who do you think would be the sprinter for Delta Gamma? You've got Dukes on the bike right now with six to go. You know, they called it Deja Dukes. I mean, this is reminiscent of last year in so many ways. Kappa Kappa Gamma thought on an exchange, and now they are going to do it. Melanzana right in the mix as well. Oh, it's really starting to heat up. You now you see Teeter drilling it down the back stretch. There's a Kappa pit. Teeter's punching it down the back stretch. It's got a little gap. And, and you've got a tired Casey Dukes on the bike right now for Delta Gamma because she did a lot of work off the front. Right now, this is kind of one, two. This was our counterattack that we were thinking about earlier. Teeter off the front now. Uh huh. Hutchison for Teeter. I think every team has the rider that they want on the bike for the last lap. Going to have to see what their strategy is here. Three to go. Chill Maniac. Four? Four Number to go. Three. And you see they're all grouped back up together. And you know, Chill Maniac on the bike for Theta. Lisa Hutchinson for Teeter. Casey Dukes for Delta Gamma. You've got crew cycling in there. You've got Kappa Kappa Gamma, you've got Pi Phi on the outside, you've got a huge pack rounding out the 26th wow. women's little 500 here. This is great. This is exciting. This is going to be a good sprint. Who's going to make the first move and when? These are the same ladies that were there last year. So wow. we saw it play out one way and, and we're just, we're, now we have to figure out how it's going to play out this year. You know, Kappa Kappa Gamma always rides aggressive. So Steven's they, doing just that. Yeah. Could be the team that leads it out. They're looking to create the chaos right now. Stevens does that. Oh, and you see Chilmini Chilminiak pulling off right there saying, Teeter, are you going to help me? Well, they, she's got to be wondering if Cap was going to go in for an exchange. She's got to be wondering that in her head. And if they're not, then th this could be a mistake to let her go. And there's no rider out right now. I believe that's Jackie Stevens for Kappa Kappa Gamma, a very experienced rider. So somebody capable of finishing this race off. Let's see what she's got. Oh, it's a great strategy if they're going to go with it. If she can stay on the bike and hold this gap, that is a great strategy. Well, she's got the lead now, and they're going to have some ground to make up. 
and all the responsibilities right now. They're playing a little bit of cat and mouse in the pack. Uh, cat Chaminiak came on the front for Thetis. Responsibility on her shoulders right now. Exactly, it's all on her shoulders. She let her go, she let Kappa go. I mean, we saw it there at the last lap. Now right. she's doing the work to try to catch back up. And responsibility is kind of an interesting term because who really does have the responsibility for closing? You know, you've got a defending champion, you've got a white jersey there. They all share it at this point. They've got to team up right. and see if they can't close Kappa Kappa Gamma's big gap yeah. right now. And part of that responsibility falls on the fastest rider on the track. The winner of ITT's Kat Chalminiak. She's doing a lot of work right now. Here's She's got one lap to go. Lap. And a sprint. Can Stevens hold on? Oh my god. It's <laughs> Jackie Stevens has got the gap. And she's making this race right now. And Cap Alpha Theta is trying so hard to close it. Chilminiak and Dukes giving chase. Oh, she's coming fast. She's coming fast from the back there. Chilminiak wants this bad. She's out of the saddle. Can she erase the bitter memory of last year? Is it going to be Dukes hitting the gas on the repeat? Dukes around the corner. Delta Gamma in the yellow jerseys down the stretch to win the 2013 Little 500. Delta Gamma 2008, 2012, and 2013. A repeat of last year going into turn three. That was exceptional, up out of the saddle. What a performance by Dukes. Unbelievable sprint by Dukes. I mean, that played out just perfectly for her. She, knew, she knows how to do this. She's done this before, she knows how to win. And she loves it. What a push on Tori. We've seen it before from her, and we saw it again, and you can predict it, but with that kind of speed, you can't match it. That was absolutely phenomenal. One of the best little 500s I've ever seen. One more time in real time. Dukes right here, Hans, just blows away the field. She had it. She had it there. She slipped on the pedals a little bit, but she already had the gap. She didn't need any more. And she won with a huge gap. Huge gap. And Pam Lobig and Delta Gamma celebrating back-to-back -back little 500 victories. We've seen it before last year. See it again this year. Wow, what a sprint. Deja Dudes. And you gotta be thinking Deja Dudes. The other teams didn't wanna hear it, but we uh, anticipated it a bit and we saw it today. It's and great. An entire team made up of seniors. Back-to-back -back little 500 championships. And with sprinters, we use this term, you know, fast twitch muscles. Apparently, Casey Dukes is packed with some fast twitch muscles, able to finish it off. Downstairs to the victors, here's Jill. Thanks so much, Rich. Casey, take me through that last lap. Did you know how, the gap that you had? I had no idea the gap that I had. I thought they were right behind me. My pedal slid, and I was like, shoot! No, you know, that worked out perfectly. It felt so good! I've been dreaming, like, literally, we have planned this race on a million times, and that's how we do it, and that's what we did, so. I couldn't be more proud of all of us. We worked our butts off. Feels good. How does the second win in a row feel for you? What? The second win in a row. How does it feel? I mean, it's incredible. I I have felt this since we won last year. Now it's just real. It's great. It's amazing. Well, thank you so much. And congratulations to Delta Gamma. Rich? A little motion down there in the pit, gents. Oh, teamwork too. You know, yeah. Casey got to finish it off, but it was Casey, Kelsey Phillips, big first set. You know, Emily Lobeg, Alexis, Alexis Howie, uh, picking up t two wins in a row. It's just, it was a team effort, as you mentioned. Seniors yeah. on this team. I th thought it was going to be a great race. It was. It was a great race. It was fun to watch. I mean, so many teams in contention down to the last lap. Right when you think one team is going to win, another one's pulling back and, and wins the sprint. I mean, it was great coaching by Pam. Uh, she really taught the riders how to react and respond and know what to do out there. And so many different ways to do it and think about it and figure out the strategy from each side. But Delta Gamera, yeah, knowing they had a plan, executing it perfectly, and knowing this is where we wanted it as we take a look at our unofficial results. Delta Gamma, Cap Alpha Theta, wing it through cycling and Melanzana. 
Unofficially one through five, and we'll have the men's race for you tomorrow here on Access TV. But Delta Gamma can celebrate tonight with another championship, back-to-back -back titles for DG. Congratulations. You've been watching Access TV's exclusive coverage of the 26th Women's Little 500. The executive producer of Access Sports is Daryl Ewalt. Director today, Erica Ferrero. Our features producer, Mike Ricci. Access TV Engineering, Dan Neighbors and Lonnie Thomas. Manager of Live Events Operations, Chris Markwell. Post-production, Andy Edwards. And thanks to all the hard-working men and women who make this happen, especially the IU Student Foundation. From broadcast partners, Jason Sonneborn, Hans Arneson, and Jill Savage. Rich Cellini reminding you tomorrow at 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific, we will have the men's little 500 here from Armstrong Stadium. Good night from Bloomington.